ask if anybody in the audience has anything to more dying to say. No. So I, can I make an introduction? Yes, yes. So Veronica Eldred, she was here last month as well. She is doing um, some practicum hours with us in East Montclair. She's looking, she's at SNHU looking to get her administrator's license. Um, so she's been putting in lots of hours both at school during the day and then at board meetings for the last two meetings. So I just wanted you to know who she was. Right. And I am a lot of she's she's yeah. and she's a son feel a lot. She's an East Montpelier alum. Right. And she's a teacher at Mary Town School. She played softball with Darcy. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of connections, but in case you didn't know. Yes. We may have. So yeah. we're waiting but only waiting. like only like We'd a minute ago. All people you would be okay with. Keep going, don't. <laughs> well, welcome. We were just introducing the guest. Um, revisions to the agenda. Anybody? Yeah. Anybody? Uh, move us to the consent agenda 2.1 approve the minutes of September 26th. I'll take a motion. I'll take a motion. I mean, I'll make a motion. <laughs> I'll make a motion to accept or to whatever. Approve the minutes. Approve. <laughs> it's too late. I'll take a second. I'll second it. Thank you. Um, any discussion of the minutes of September 26th? Can we get spellings and all that correct this time? We good. I'm not seeing or hearing any discussion. I'm ready for a vote. All of those in favor of approving the minutes as presented, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. 3.1 Student Monitoring Report. Um, were you all able to access the full monitoring report on under Bill's blog and in pieces parts? Yeah, like yeah. I found some slides in different parts of yeah. it. It wasn't exactly like what he was projecting. Okay, so so I'm going to direct you to a totally different place where you'll see East Montpelier's. Okay. Given the late hour and the number of slides that I put together, I'm going to show you the highlights tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Um, but so that you all know how to get to the full 30 something slide presentation if you're interested in looking at a lot more data. If you go to the WCSU site, go to administration, superintendent, mm -hmm. superintendent's blog, mm -hmm. then you'll see over on the right hand it says um, October monitoring reports. Oh, yeah, I did see them all over there. Okay, yeah. so that's where you'll, but I'm going to show you because a number of slides you've already seen tonight from the full presentation, and then a lot of them are just me getting into the weeds with data that I won't waste your time with tonight. But, um, so these are really the highlights. Um, so looking at transferable skills, one of the things that I tried to do, because this is a very similar report as what I shared with you last October, is to do a comparison of where we were a year ago. Um, so looking at the 2018 climate survey data, which, which students, families, and teachers took in the late spring of 2018, last year, 85% of our students in grades 1 through 6 believe they work problems out with their peers, and 92% of students in grades 1 through 6 believe they have choices in what they learn. This number has increased from 65% um, a year ago. Our climate survey data doesn't, doesn't align well with our transferable skills, but it's really the only place right now we have data on our transferable skills. Um, so I felt like this was important data to share. At the end of this year, our teachers will all have had a whole year of reporting on report cards, the transferable skills, um, and assessing students. But right now, we just don't have that information. This is a similar slide um, as of what I shared last year, but it's an update of all that we, we did in the 2017-18 year as far as professional learning. Um, EMES teachers spent about 110 hours last year in PD whether that was the 90-minute embedded um, PD sessions or the 90-minute Wednesday afternoons. Um, and th this is just a list, not an exhaustive list, but um, it covers most of what we spent our professional time on last year. Can I ask a question? Yeah, how please much, do ask questions. How much time do you feel you guys are spending on infinite campus learning and uh, Adjusting. Yeah, so um, we are we are 
um, using one Wednesday a month for IC as a whole staff. Troubleshooting, just helping each other out. Dave Willard is our IC person um, in the building. He is spending two hour long lunch periods a week, like on Mondays and Wednesdays, where people just come to his room and it, it's open and he's available to help support. Um, so I would say on average, a teacher's probably spending about an hour a week, maybe, on IC. And do you feel that's uh, sustainable or it will turn it's, down? Because... It's overwhelming right now, okay. um, but it's not, but it's because they're learning to do it, really. Okay. What are they doing? Entering scores mm -hmm. into it. So the expectation is that all teachers will enter assignments, they're mm -hmm. called, but scores into IEC at least once every two weeks in every subject. Every single EMES teacher in their goal setting this fall wrote a goal for themselves. So some might have written, I'm going to learn the tool, right? It's at that level. Some might have written, I am going to enter in assignments for it once a week. Mm -hmm. um, some goals were really more around what it is they wanted to report to parents, not the tool, but the information provided. So, um, for the parent portal? It's all parent portal. Okay. It's all entering in assignments. But they, so they've had their traditional paper grade books. Mm -hmm. It's using the electronic grade book. Any other? And please stop me as we go through. So this next slide is um, specific to EMES. On the left, you're going to see similar to what you saw in the cafeteria. Um, but this is what I had shared a year ago, where we were with report card local and SBAC. Um, as far as triangulation and where we are now, very similar to SU, um, our teachers are um, scoring students. My, my assumption, similar to Bill's, is a, a little bit harder than our local assessments and SBAC measures. Um, this is literacy. Yeah. Is the, uh, what's being taught? So that's the goal that our that our report cards now. So the, since you um, left our report card language has completely changed, yeah. which should be in alignment with the other two. With the other two. Yeah. But is what's being done in classroom changed as well? Yeah, well, yes. To re like yes to reflect yeah we're students. Yes. That's the goal, and it and it. Looks as though it's happening in letters. Yet. My next slide that I'm going to show you isn't quite the same. Um, similar to what we saw in math, there's still a, a discrepancy in what our teachers are seeing and assessing on a daily basis um, in math and what our local and SBAC assessments are, the, the data that that's giving us. So it came down slightly from 80% to I think that's 67%. Um, but we're still in math. Our teachers are scoring students as doing, um, being more proficient than our local assessments or SBAC. But both of those got closer to the SBAC. But both are, yes, yes. both did, yes. So it, besides not having enough time for math teaching, it, does that mean that they might have uh, not as high expectation as they have in literacy in math. Could that, that play you into could it that because there's no? You you could yeah make yes, that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this really. I don't know that we have the data to draw that conclusion. You can see there's not an alignment by what's assessed, reported to be assessed. We have to go in. And Alicia may have that from her walkthroughs because she's been in the classroom so long, but but we have it across. We don't have the. Quantitative data doesn't give you the why. But don't, Qualitative data gives you the why. So, but don't we have more data now in our data well for where students, students are in both literacy and math better, or is math still less They're than still, literacy? We're, we're okay. still lacking data in math. Okay. We, um, this fall, we triangulated data just on our fall assessments. We looked at um, the STAR 360 measure, and we looked at teacher to kind of teacher judgment which would be report cards and as far as other assessments go 
we're kind of all over the place. Some okay. grades up to up to grade two, we're using the PNOA math assessment. Beyond grade two, we don't have other great measures that we're using. That that could be something a, a conclusion you come to. I'm going to share another mm -hmm. report card slide in just a minute. Um, that I think will help explain a little bit of it as well. So the blue um, the blue bar was the data on our report cards from 2016-17, and the red is from this past year. Um, so I'll let you look at that for just a minute. One thing that this is telling me, and the, the math and literacy goes in with that for the report cards is we, our teaching is more aligned, Ellen, your question, to the SLOs, what we're, what we're reporting on. Um, I think that as individuals, we sometimes have a tendency to give the benefit of the doubt or score higher. If you look at the blue, last year when I reported this, it was 80% or greater in every subject for, that you know, students were proficient. We know that's not the case. Um, and if you look at this past year's data, I think that's a more realistic view because we're assessing to measures that we just didn't have before with the report card data. We knew our report cards needed to change, right? So this is following similar to Bill's slide, two cohorts of students over time, our current sixth graders and our current seventh graders. At the bottom, um, it, it's hard to read, but that's from 2015 through 2018, so it's three years worth of data. Um, what you want to see is a, is a jump of between 30 and 40 points per year. Um, so the goal or the hope would be that the students would gain about 60 to 65 points growth over the period of time. A huge celebration, similar to what we saw with SU data, is our students are growing at a higher rate than that in literacy. And just to remind you, the black line is proficient. The yellow line is where our, the median score for EMES. So we are scoring above proficient um, over time following these two, two cohorts of students. And this is a comparison, um, free and reduced lunch and non. I did not do IEP students following cohorts because our numbers were so small. But if you look at our non-free and reduced lunch students as third graders, and then again as sixth graders, um, they made 130 points worth of growth. And our third graders as sixth graders free and reduced lunch made 157 points worth of growth. This is a huge celebration mm -hmm. for us. Our um, Potentially at risk students, our free and reduced lunch students, are making greater growth than those not identified. Shelby should have been zoned out on all the data, but is that just the SBAC and the. Um, this is, thank you, yeah, this, this is, is SBAC. Not, this is not teacher assessment. This is the, only SBAC. So these, <coughs> these um, slides that look like this with the yellow and black lines are all only SBAC data. We can't do this without the data and the method on scale score and beyond. And 157 points translate to like you were doing with so the, I'll, I'm going to show you a slide on that in my analysis but so you're looking for at least 90 points in these slides 90 points would be um, three years worth of growth our students are growing it's it's an it actually ends up being two and a half years worth of growth every two years but um, I'll share that with you in just a minute. Um, did you want to well um, I don't need an answer, but will we be able to draw some correlations between the tier, the additional tier um, Intervention. interventions that we're doing and that by town meeting? Say more. Well, I mean, as we continue to defend that program, mm -hmm. does it look like some of this data would be some of this improvement that we're seeing that, that we could make a, a correlation mm -hmm. between our our um, dedication of resources to that. And, well, no, 
the outcomes from that are are being reflected in some of this data that we're seeing. Yes, I'm going to share with you an activity that I did with the staff in looking. So we went through the very long 30 slide presentation, and I'm going to share some um, questions that came about from them and some next steps for us in looking at the data. Um, we this report because uh, be, well one of the reasons because our report our reports needed to be consistent across the SU and not every school has the same interventions they all look different um, so what you're seeing is I'm, I'm only using free and reduced lunch could we pull out those students receiving interventions and look at their data yes but it's not for tonight that's fine yeah mm -hmm. but, but what, it what, is, whatever the data is if yeah. I mean it, so this is a tiny snapshot that we're seeing, mm -hmm. but I, I mean, my feeling is, you know, like maximum kudos to mm -hmm. our staff. Mm -hmm. I mean, you yeah. know, I'm looking yeah. at free, yes. free, yes. Reduced, yes. Yes. free and reduced lunch that, you know, our 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 mean or our average, mm -hmm. whatever the, whatever that yellow line is, the median, median has moved in those three years from below proficient to right. above proficient. Yes. Um, I mean, I, we're moving the needle, yes. finally. So some of my frustration shared at the full board, um, if I'd had this report previously, I wouldn't have been quite as frustrated. Okay. Anyway, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so just some analysis from those slides. Um, our report cards are much more aligned with local and SVAC. Those numbers up there show the 61, 66, and 71 percent. That's the alignment of this current, this year. Um, and that's where we were a year ago. 87 percent is what teachers believed students were um, proficient in SVAC was telling us 60. So we are getting in much better alignment. Uh, four years of SVAC data indicates our students are doing better each year in literacy. So and it's an average, and you don't have this slide, but it's in the full. So basically, our students in literacy are gaining an average of 34 scale points each year, which is over a year's growth, um, which is great. EMES median scores continue to be above proficient, which is similar to the SU. Um, we do continue to have a discrepancy in our scores of free, reduced, and non. Following two cohorts of students, our free and reduced students are gaining skills actually at a greater rate than those um, who have not been identified, which is huge. And then following two cohorts over time, students have made at least two and a half years worth of growth in ELA in two years time. What is the percentage of free and reduced now? Uh, Mid 20s, we yeah. always hover around 24, 26%. Now on to math. Um, very similar slide. This is using SPEC data. Black line is um, proficient. So this is following two cohorts again, our current sixth graders and our current seventh graders in math over time. Uh, the goal being that they would make a 60 points worth of growth in two years is, um, is two years worth of growth. So our current sixth graders are, are right around two years worth of growth in two years, and our current seventh are just under. Um, and as you can see, our yellow median line is uh, looks a lot different than it does in literacy and math. Mm -hmm. So that last so number it went down. What yeah. That means our our the current seventh graders, our last year sixth graders performed. Worse than they had the year before. Okay. So. Is it, does it have anything to do with it being in the new school? Or? So this is last, oh, last, last, last so spring. they are now in seventh, but they took but this they at the out. end of sixth grade. So that's okay. six, five, So four. that oh. answers my question too, well, which well. is whether there was some topic area that we were missing. Well, that I'm got, not didn't, our, didn't our interventions drop throughout that period of time? That, it, that did happen. Mm -hmm. That did happen. Um, yep. Last year they did? Yeah. We had a decrease okay. in FTEs for interventions last year. In math? Yes. I thought Anne moved into that. She because she was a classroom teacher in third grade and sixth grade, two hours mm -hmm. of her day. So she ended up, um, our FTEs and interventions in math declined greatly last year. That's That was one of the things that we addressed in the budget. 
Do you remember I showed you that um, that data and I said back up. Yeah, back up. we had some data to share last year that was looking good and I was worried it may not look so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but that also reminds me of what we learned, not learned, but we learned when we went to the board training all together that that having that the, the teacher that can address the 90 percent you know like right. the high quality mm -hmm. tier high quality mm -hmm. tier one yes. is, is so crucial important. because if yeah. the interventions fall it's you know, that it's, it's critical and it is so while correlation is not necessarily causation it's an interesting correlation well, I mean, it suggests that we can get the job done with the resources that were available in literacy. Mm -hmm. And with the same amount of resources, we can't get the job done in math. Mm -hmm. uh, our resources aren't the same in literacy and math. We had a full-time reading interventionist, and we did not. That was a point okay. five and a point two in math. Okay. So not full-time. Um, our reading and inter literacy interventionist was a 50%. And our math interventionist is twenty percent. Okay. And what are they now? Fifty and fifty. Um. Now, I'd have to do a time study. So, can you hold that and make sure I come back to it? Um. Because that's a really good question, but it will lead me on a tangent that I think is important for you to hear. Um. This is looking also at non-free and reduced and free and reduced students. Um. Same exact cohort of of students. Um, these are our, they're now in seventh grade, but as third graders where they were performing non-free and reduced and um, then as sixth graders, and then as third graders and sixth graders, those identified as um, potentially at risk students. So the, the point, the goal point is 90 points worth of growth is three years. Mm -hmm. Our, so our non-free and reduced are doing, uh, they're making about three years worth of growth in three years, and our, um, in this particular cohort, are, we're not making the same gains. Same exact kids we're talking about in literacy as in math. Mm -hmm. So my analysis of, of looking at all of this data is our report cards are slightly more aligned, and you can see those um, numbers compared comparing this year to last year at this time. Four years of SBAC data show that EMES median is at or below proficient in all grades. Our scores in math have actually declined since 2014 and 15 um, in looking at SBAC alone. There continues to be a discrepancy in math for our free and reduced and non. Um, and then following two cohorts over time, our free and reduced learned students are not making the same gains. So it's the um, total opposite of what we saw in literacy. Before I go on, because I'm, uh, let me go back to your question, Darcy. So what we do every fall, we give the fall assessments and then we get together as grade level teams with all of the interventionists and we look at the data and we decide who needs what for interventions, specifically in literacy and math. Um, so both of our interventionists are highly skilled to teach math or literacy. So it's not really a 50-50 kind of a thing. It's an example would be, um, you know, we may have a grade level that has barely any literacy needs, and by the time they get to fourth through sixth grade, that's the case. Um, they're they're readers, right? They're pretty strong, and our scores support that. But they may they may both have to be doing math interventions, right? So it's not a matter of um, anymore. We have a math person and a reading person, they're just giving interventions to kids in whatever, which of those two subjects they need. So it's kind of a shift in, um, so their FTEs are the same, right? We have we have the two they bodies. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, another example is in our first grade right now, um, they're both giving math interventions. So our intervention block really isn't in literacy because our teachers are feeling like they can meet the needs in the classroom. But when we do reteach, it's only in math. Um, so it really varies depending on not necessarily personnel, but what the date, what the kids 
if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Based on the data. Right. To mm -hmm. what degree can you disaggregate this data in terms of, like, if you look at it from a professional development lens, yeah. for example, can you see trends yeah. and um, up and downs? And I mean, I assume if you can see that, that you address it in some way. So Bill was right when he said, and it was actually um, nine and 10 years ago that we put a lot of focus in literacy instruction. Um, and the teachers really, I think, especially at the elementary level, you go into teaching and you're, you know you're going to be teaching reading right, and writing. Um, as you go up in grades, um, so a lot, so first of all, a lot of focus was put into professional development back when you were here in ND mm -hmm. around te first instruction of reading. What does it look like? Um, we use the Readers and Writers Workshop model. We have had a ton of professional development in it. We have programs that we use um, in reading and writing. A lot of time has been spent in PD around that. Our scores show that. Mm -hmm. um, this the, that has not happened in math in the same way. We don't have a program, and you'll see later on we're piloting, and we need to have one. Um, and teachers' comfort level or interest in teaching math is not quite the same. I have teachers who just would rather not teach math. Um, so we're departmentalizing as early as kindergarten and as high as fifth and sixth grade, but. Um, we haven't thrown everything we have into it like we have with literacy and um and our scores are reflecting that um i my personal belief is a huge piece of that is the program mm -hmm. when the program went away which was around 2014 15 regardless of what you have to say about the program we were using it was something and when teachers were left to create and figure out on their own um our scores kind of plummeted and what, what was the I mean, what was the reasoning of the program in that? It wasn't in alignment with Common Core. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there were there were good reasons for it, but it also um, was to the detriment of our students because teachers were floundering. And I mean, you can speak to that, Ellen. We spent <laughs> hours and days, you know, talking about math and finding materials and looking at websites and trying to create and. Um, our time and energy were not spent in the right ways. Where if we had something in common to look at and as a guide and to use so and to tweak yeah. as a framework similar to what we've done with the teachers college in reading and writing, I don't believe our scores would. So is there anybody looking into that? So yes. yes. Uh, the good news is there is a pilot going on this fall. Um, Almost every single one of the East Montpelier teachers asked to be on that and are on that pilot. So they're piloting a number of, a couple of different programs, two different programs, um, with the goal that we will have a program next fall. But I think that, that what we're seeing in stores is a direct result of teachers just trying to do the best they could with what they had. And, and I may have just missed what you said, but is that pilots SU wide or is mm -hmm. it? Okay. I can do the paper. Like reams of paper. <laughs> I, I feel for the teachers. Um, so looking at, um, and I want to share with you some rationale behind this, because you saw the oh. table in Bill's packet. Yeah, we didn't spend um, time talking about that. So yeah. we have a total of 155 students in grades 1 through 6. On, in September, 51% of those students were proficient. And by June, we believe 74% should be proficient. Of those students, we believe 79% will make at least one year's growth. Now, let me tell you how these numbers were developed and then kind of the thinking, it, it goes right along with your um, conversation about guarantees. So I sat down, every, I had every single teacher fill this statement out for their children looking at the data that we have thinking about who their kids are as learners, um, who do they know can become proficient, who might be a stretch but they want to get them there, and then who are those students who we need to keep moving along but they're not sure that they're going to hit. If, if you're in the red and you are way below proficient, to become proficient by, by June of this year may not be attainable. Um, in looking at that table, there's a 
a wide range of where people hope, where schools hope their students will be. From us being the lowest of 79% of our students will make one year's gain to 100% of students in some buildings. And Flora came to me earlier today and she said, you know, what is this? Why are we so low? And I think the way that, that we have talked about writing goals in my background in special ed is you write goals that are specific, measurable, and attainable. Um, I don't believe, I think that 100% is a wonderful goal to have. I don't believe that we will have 100% of our students in that place in eight months. I think floor some of those uh, targets some of those goals you see some boards i know have adopted guarantees those could be a reflection of boards that adopted guarantees that's why it's 100 percent yeah and, and i was just wondering because i could see I, I saw that there might be something wrong with it there because when you go when it said september a percent of students proficient we were by far you know, not by a lot, but you know, quite a bit. We have, Fifty-one percent. We have the highest proficiency. So then I was like, if we have the highest proficiency, we don't have as many students to get up in the growth. So I, I was just, it was, it was just a question. Yeah, I, I was, we'll I was satisfied wait. with that attainable. You know, I, I think I, I agree with you that having something mm -hmm. more specific that is attainable and. I think we just, we just have to see what the results are. I, that's what I said yeah. to Claire. I said I think it will be very interesting at the end of the year to see where we all land. Um, you know, my hope is that we're be above 79% mm -hmm. and we're, you know, pleasantly surprised and we've moved more students than we believe could have moved in a year. Um, it goes back to that conversation, Ruben, you and Bill and I had where you said a community member had asked you, like, how can you ever say 100%? are going to be, right? That means my child's always gonna fail because they're never gonna be, they're never gonna make that 100%. And it's just two different or, ways of Or the school, it. by extension, yeah. is always going to, it's right. like no child left Nothing behind, mind. which I'm <laughs> yeah. very mindful of setting a goal that looks or smells anything like that. Mm -hmm. I, I do not want to set teachers up to fail any more than I want to set students up to fail. Right. But that's why looking at a growth model. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I like the growth students. model and Matt made a good comment in our group discussion about, you know, maybe the guarantee is something like, you know, some high ninety percentage of students will attain these goals, mm -hmm. but every student will make some um, acceptable level of progress each year. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, we can we can acknowledge that this isn't a no child left behind kind of goal, but we're definitely going to make growth happen. Right. right. We we may not get everybody over the finish line because we acknowledge that reality is reality, mm -hmm. but we're not going to just give up on that one student who isn't going to ever cross the line and say, you know what, we're just putting our resources somewhere else. Right. And likewise, we're not going to take all of our resources from the students that are already over the line mm -hmm. and just leave them there. We want those students to they be growing to be as well. Yes, mm -hmm. that's true. And that was one thing that that, that I talked to the teachers about. We have students um, looking at last year's growth report. We have students who are in uh, above proficient in math who may have made four or five points worth of growth in a year. And I said to the teachers, so what do you, you know, what are they doing? Just sitting there putting in seat time? Like they need to be making 30 points worth of growth just as much as the student who's struggling. It's not acceptable to say, well, just because they've already got it, you know, they're good to go. Mm -hmm. You need to be making sure, like you said, every student is making adequate growth. As 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 or if we discuss guarantees. I, I'm adverse to guaranteeing outcomes. I think we guarantee opportunities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you have to acknowledge part of the outcome is individual. And you, you can't guarantee what an individual is going to do, but you can guarantee the opportunities that we're going to provide to students. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to be equal, they can be equitable. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Yeah. I have just maybe one or two more. Um, 
So here's our current state. The teachers continue to participate in PD through embedded PD weekly after or Wednesday afternoons and then individual coaching sessions. Our report card data, local assessments, and SBEC are becoming more closely aligned. Um, SBEC data is showing that students are doing better in ELA than in math, especially those who are at risk. Um, our free and reduced lunch students are making greater gains than those not identified in ELA. Um, like I said, our math scores have declined over the last four years and transferable skills continue to be taught and assessed. And my hope is that next October, I will share with you some real data around that. I knew I'm having a, what is ELA? English language arts. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> this is the having a kind vocabulary of moment. Thank you. The desired state. Um, the goal is that all students will make at least one year's growth in math. Right, that is that is where we do want to be. Um, that we will have a common math program to support our math instruction, similar to what we have in reading and writing. That we will have. Jen talked about this earlier. We'll have local common assessments for each SLO. We don't. The gap between our at-risk students and those who are not will decrease in all subjects in all grades. Um, we'll continue our coaching in academic behavior and technology. Um, the MTSS, Stephen, what you were you were talking about, our interventions, and all of that will be in place for students who need that academically and behaviorally. Um, and this last bullet is around our parent portal and mm -hmm. opening that up that the parents and families will actually understand where their students are at at any given time. All right. How are you teaching parents how to do that? So we've had um, uh, at Parent Information Night in early September, we had a huge, a huge majority of our parents come. Arlen did six sessions with parents, 20-minute um, sessions throughout the course of the night where she did training. That okay. um, she took that training and did kind of screenshots through and walked them, through, walked parents through IEC. That's been in the newsletter a few times. That's gone out to families. So if you didn't, weren't able to go, here's how. Um, we've had parents come in and just do individual sessions. Okay. Fortunately, we have a lot of fam we have a lot of new families, but we also have a lot of families at U32 who the portal is not new. Yeah. How so, are you making sure that you reach the parents that? really need that access to that data um classroom teachers would they have so at open house that was a piece of it um especially though at parent teacher conferences coming up okay. there's a piece around the portal i feel like we have and i'll have to look at the percentage we have a, a large percentage of our parents so there's a form you have to fill out in order to get on a large percentage of our families have done that so they've, they've at least taken the first step and we're already getting some of our teachers communication from families about assignments, which means they're looking at them. I was just going back to one of the things that you said in the full meeting, which is, you know, those engaging those students and families that are really struggling. Right. How, how do we make sure that um, they access those tools that are available? Yeah. Can you get a full version of the PowerPoint? Uh, no, you can well, get, it's horrible. You, it's, it's not horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. Yeah. You can get the information on your phone. It doesn't so, look the same. It doesn't look the same, and I don't know. I mean, it might just be a kindergarten thing because we're, the assessments are slightly different, but I don't yeah. know if you've seen it. But um, I was like, Jill had posted something, and I was like, 16 out of what? <laughs> And she's like, what? It doesn't show you. So I yes, took screenshots of, it, of my phone and of the web and you had no idea what right. the it was out of. So she ended up putting it in the comments. Yes. Which, yes, we did that in October. Right. Which is, is great, but it's still a struggle. I mean, for me, I'm like, that's annoying. I have to go all the way. I mean, not, I hate the phone app anyways, but because you yeah. can't do anything on it. But um it's it's an interesting. I mean, she it might brought that up at our in service in October, so it's definitely a lot of learning from mm -hmm. for, on the teachers end and parents. What works, what's useful, what's helpful, what doesn't work, what makes it more confusing. It's all starting to kind of surface mm -hmm. as we're using it. But that's a that's a good point about those who 
um, need it and maybe don't necessarily have access to it um, that we need to be thoughtful it's about. It's just something to think about. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. It's not something that I expect an answer to. Do you find that the, the parents right. that need the communication also come to parent-teacher conferences? Or do you feel like we some have really, them? we have, it's, our parents are amazing. <laughs> they come to pretty much everything. Um, and even those families who can't make it, you know, they might, their kids might go to CC after school and we meet with them, well, you know, before they pick them up from CC or, you know, at different times. But we have more phone conferences, you know, we, we have really good um, parent participation, whether it's conferences or, you know, other other way, like open house last week, you know, just coming in to look at your, your children's work. Um, they, our parents care very much how their children are doing, which is wonderful. We're lucky in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, so this is this is the hope for this year that um, instructional coaching will continue. We now have, and Lindy had asked this question. Um, so Ann Carter stepped out of East Montpelier, but is spending some time with us in her role as the WCSU math coach. Um, identify a common math program as a goal for this year. Continue, so this is a big one and this goes to the DMG report. The blocks of time for our students who need interventions in multiple areas. That's a huge issue for us and we're trying to work through that um, so that they're not missing tier one instruction but that they're getting interventions where they need it. Um, we have started really using um, triangulation of data this year and we'll continue to do that. And then all of the wonderful opportunities around transferable skills. And finally, the board, um, what can you do? Continue to support us around the our tiered instruction for students. Um, hold me accountable for making sure that the teachers are getting what they need in order to um, provide that high quality instruction for students. Um, keeping the implementation plan in our CIP at the forefront of our conversations um, and offer guidance on what your priorities are for us as a school. Um, we've talked a lot about ways to have the board share information with families and um, in the community and then continue to be the supportive and informed board that you are. A budget question yeah. as you're looking at these math programs are you looking at purchasing a I mean that would be a big budget item if a canned program was bought in math those aren't mm -hmm. as cheap as Calkins writing and reading units right. type things so there's some that we're looking at that are free um, and then there's others that have a cost to them we have this this math pilot crew what Bill has told us is um, basically not to worry about that in our local budgets right now so that is a very good bill Kimball question I don't have the answer for that okay. I'm not on the pilot um, I know that another principal um, the principal at Berlin Aaron had asked that exact question you know should we be thinking about this and he said um, we don't need to think about it at the local level now I don't know if there's SU money they're looking to shift into um, that I, I don't have an answer to that I remember going through a couple of adoptions when I was working at East Montpelier yeah. when they went from everyday math to some mm -hmm. other math or and, and it's, it's a huge cost yeah. mm -hmm. yep. so thinking about that is something I mean to me that's a board kind yes. of thing is budget yeah um, the other thing through all of this is you're having your um, you know what I think about all of this is there's a wealth of PD going on at your school with your 90 minute block, your early release time, as well as all your SU time. Mm -hmm. So there should be some expertise and some <laughs> real knowledge as far as, I think that should be an expectation with that much PD time built into the system. Yeah. Um, that's not normal in other systems. Yeah. So. I think that's something to keep it. I'm not saying cut it or anything else. I'm just saying that needs to be remembered. Mm -hmm. that Teachers that, are spending a lot of time with each other learning from yes. each other. Yeah, that's very true. Concerning the math program that may or may not be purchased, 
um, and others can weigh in, but as being one of the fiscally conservative people, um, I would want, I would expect to hear from you what's the best option yeah. and not be concerned about cost. And if it's, you know, a million dollars, then the board's going to say, no, we can't right. do it. <laughs> but that's but, why they're piloting. But I mean, literally, yeah, if the difference yeah. is between $5,000 and $20,000. <laughs> you need to go uh, with that. That's right. not a big deal, yeah. right? Yeah. From my perspective. Right. And if $10,000 is exactly what we need and what the staff fully feels like what's going to work best, we yeah. have ten thousand more bucks is like we need to put the resources in. Yeah. yeah. We do. Yeah. Um so but I think you need to hear from us that mm -hmm. find out what's best and tell us that. Right. And you heard it from Thanks. Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> from the fiscally <laughs> responsible one. Um oh, the way I'm sure I'm kidding. Kidding. Oh, oh, in that yeah. Yeah. Oh. From the cutter, yeah. from the hacker. Yeah. I didn't even have to elbow him tonight. Not be um, no, I am waiting to hear back from this the pilot committee. Who mm -hmm. also okay. Ellen Dorsey and Ann Carter and Jen Miller Arsenal are all part of that. You know, so we principals are relying on them to share that information back with us as they pilot it with their students. Um, and I don't know the exact timeline of that, but I know it's in people's minds around budget. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll share with you when I know more. I think but, that's it. Yeah. But I just wanted to say thank you because mm -hmm. it's a mm -hmm. lot of work and, you know, it's, it's very informative. It, it's, it's super informative and, you know, and, uh, you know, thank you for clarifying that uh, the attainable goal, yeah. which mm -hmm. makes me. You know, I think yeah. so, Sophia. We, I'm super proud of the work that we're doing. You know, really nice. So please thank everybody on our behalf. You know, because mm -hmm. it's, they're you know, they, they're working really yeah. hard. And as dreadful as the math, uh, you know, we have the eye on the ball now. So we're like, yeah. Good. yeah. No, the scores. The scores. Okay. No, the scores. No, math is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> In, that's great. I, I did see on the the one question I forgot to ask is like we we did had a column for science. So we because so Jen shared with you we did not get any okay because there was data no on sign. we piloted it in mm -hmm. the spring so okay. we don't have anything to report. Um, and as she said, it was very rigorous. And I'm guessing that when I report to you in a year how we do this year. That'll be another topic of conversation. Okay. They did announce at the meeting Jen was there two days ago, we're at yesterday, maybe we were in Capitol Plaza yesterday, the AOE is going to release either district or SU, not mm -hmm. I don't know how this is, data okay. from that test statewide in December, mm -hmm. I think they said, which nobody had expected. Okay. But they said there is going to be some Something sort like of that. not student level, but mm -hmm. And because we are all individual districts, when they use the word district, I don't really know if, because right. that would be a school level right. in our SU. So it may be school level, I don't know. Okay. But there will be some data from that science test. Not only was it rigorous, it was very confusing as to how it worked. Yes, it was. Be, and they are now going to be this. two complete ses sections instead of the way it was last time. So one will end and another one will begin versus a kid sits down and does the whole two sessions without you realizing, wait, this was supposed to be two days. Or they thought they were done and it just yeah. kept going and going right. and going. So they have fixed that, they said, at that meeting. Well, that's good. Yeah. And then one last thing, would you mind, because it's being recorded, sharing the event that just happened at East Montpelier with the coding of the kids. Oh my gosh, so we had so much and happen at East Montpelier. Yeah. Um, oh, and today. We've had WCAX come to us three times in the last three weeks. <laughs> so so uh, last week we had, I don't know if you saw it, um, Thursday, yeah, night of open house. Um, some of you are probably <laughs> in the room with him. Governor Scott came and, and held a press conference in our library, his his usual press conference, but the topic was around coding. Um, and this hour of code, it's called, where students from all over, um, Governor Scott asked what coding was, and if you don't know, <laughs> basically everything that goes into making something work or run, right, programming it. Um, our students do a lot of that. 
And so we had students from grades one, two, three, and six come and teach um, him and many members of the AOE how to code and what that looks like at the first grade level and what that looks like at sixth grade level. Um, it was awesome and it was a great afternoon. They spent about two and a half hours with us. Um, and then today we had them come, WCAX came back and they are doing a report, I'll let you know when it's coming out, on trauma informed schools and um, PBIS in the elementary schools. So they interviewed um, Dave Miller, our sixth grade teacher, they interviewed students, they um, kind of um, recorded a circle, they, the sixth grade class circled up and talked about PBIS and what that means to them. They interviewed Kelly Bushy. They came here and talked to some students about restorative practice and what that looks like at this level. And they're gonna be interviewing Dave Melnick and they're gonna to put together a piece um, in the next couple of weeks. So that's very mm -hmm. exciting. Thank you. Also today, Washington World came with the um, Rotary Club and some students from the um, Central Vermont Career Center, and they planted apple trees in honor of David Coburn. So they planted two trees in two different spots. David was a huge, as you know, um, part of East Montpelier, and he was part of the Rotary, brought um, dictionaries to students, talked about the history of East Montpelier for many years. Um, so we have two trees planted in his honor. Um, that happened today, so pictures will be in the Washington world on that. So we got some. Where are the press. trees? There's one up, kind of near the sidewalk, near the the loop where you park, and then there's one. We have a gap. You probably noticed in the maple trees mm -hmm. along the line, yep, right there, that. where we had to take them down. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. If you are interested in looking at a lot more slides with a lot more data, you can go on to. And Phil Scott's publicist, publicist or something put a Everywhere. lot of pictures yeah. from he it did. on. I think it was on Facebook. It was on Facebook. Yeah. 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 And I was, I was at the VSBA conference and the, I, I told Alicia, the, Dan French came in and he was like the first thing he said, he came over and talked to me and said like, there was, you know, he was really pleased and he wanted he to come back. He there. Was, yeah, they, so yeah, the Secretary of Education was there too. Mm -hmm. And he was yeah. super pleased and wanted to come back to the school and he was very yes. impressed. A lot of men yeah. in suits and it was uh -huh. so cute <laughs> because one of the first graders said, I met with 12 governors today. <laughs> like, no, they weren't all the governor, but they looked like they could have been. Lacey was terrified. Yeah, yeah she was. And <laughs> then she came home today. and she was like, he didn't even know what coding was. <laughs> it was good. So he's coming back for reteach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Uh, okay, <laughs> a little bit of levity behind us. Um, thank you for that. Yeah. That was really helpful. Um, Act 46 update. Do we really need to? Are there any questions, I guess? Because we... Is there anything that we need to cover that we didn't cover in the full board? I, I don't think, I think the biggest thing is the timeline. Yeah, for, timeline. For, for us, we, we gave Bill, I, I want to say about 10 or 8 questions on... A representation on the on, on the borders that I, somebody resigned from Berlin to it so you just getting some things on writing to make sure that we can do what we want to do and the timeline is just so it's compressed really yep. so so we want to know if there's ways that we let's say they announce on November 30th that we can turn around and start being proactive now on mm -hmm. how to get to how to get to the end, end point. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then whatever work we're doing is advisory to to the transitional board, mm -hmm. right? Because we don't we are I not think, at 76. I, I think the impression was that the full board meeting that formed them was it's probably not going to be advisory. It's probably going to be what the decisions will be based on. Yeah, but because we don't have because we are not at 706B, we we in essence, technically, technically do not have the authority. That's the way that we are operating, 
but you don't have any authority, but you're mm -hmm. still going to make specific. Oh, and that's what we're doing, and, and that's the, right. so. I'm not trying to diminish what we're doing, no. but I'm also trying to be very careful of the language that yeah. that we're using, and that is all you know. Obviously, depending on what they're going to say on November the thirtieth. Mm -hmm. Can I just have a question? Yes. Um, something that relates to what Alicia was just talking about with Governor Scott coming and the coding program and um, also the lovely Eco Harvest Day. Mm -hmm. um, does East Montpelier have a higher tech budget that puts money into coding? And does East Montpelier Taxpayer money pay for eco? Are we the only school of the five elementaries that has eco? Are we the only one that has coding? Um, and what will happen with Pac 46 when there's one tech budget? And, you know, if people do fundraising, where does that fundraising money go? Does it go into one giant pot or does the school keep it? I mean, what happens? Well, I would we think the know. fundraising would be similar to a PTO or PTA, mm -hmm. which each school would have their own and have those kinds of funds. But I don't know. Sure. I don't know. We don't, yeah. Yeah, I don't but they talked I don't about council until, that's until agreements are reached. Yeah. No yeah. One yeah. Has we have the articles. Yeah. Those would be on the forefront of discussion, though. Mm -hmm. I would. Yeah. Yeah. But does East Montpelier pay any money for eco? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, and the rest is fundraising. Yes. And so, what about the coding for the, the robots? Uh, a lot's through grants. Um, over the years, has been through grants, and then we, every school has a tech budget, mm -hmm. which is pretty similar. Pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So you could, I mean, you know, it, it's a question: Can yeah. you write a grant just for your school, or does it have to be for the new thing? I mean. Right. Grant would be written for the new district, yeah. and, and the advantage the advantage is being a larger district, you qualify for more grants. Yeah. I mm -hmm. guess I have a question for Governor Scott that he was so uh, emboldened to say he didn't vote for the permanent school budget. Would you mm -hmm. introduce an budget? Yeah. Or the WCSU that, budget? Well, you know, he's also yeah. very outspoken yeah. about the higher spending schools, and we are one. Correct. So there he was yeah. touting it, and I looked at it and right. said, "Did anybody tell him we're one of the highest spending schools?" When he's there touting it, I I just think you know, yeah. yeah. And but and I don't think that conversation is going to change. He is, you know, he's physically conservative, you know. So we don't know what he's going to do. We have very little control of how we're going to use our money, anyways, because depending on how they change it, you know, if they do a move like they did this year on reducing mm -hmm. educational fund, we'd be looking at. Number is completely different too. I mean, that's, so that's the so regardless of that forty six, is everybody going to go down to get everybody? Our school is going to go down to get those up, mm. or is everybody right. going to go up? You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's that's, a lot that of point that we concerns. have. It's a concern. Is that that, that is a possibility? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. That is. Um, and it would be a shame. Yeah. I tend to lean optimistic sometimes. I've worked in budgets where it was so, one budget and schools had personal money, but it's something that has yeah. to be because of that school having fundraisers or having grants specific to their whatever. I mean, what about the $10,000 that music program? I mean, where did I get? <coughs> yeah. current, current gifts and funds go forward under Act 46. They, they remain at they the remain district. The district. Yeah. Um, and fundraising that's current remains at the school. Those are good yes, questions. But they're good questions. Yeah, have so technically, accounts. we're just as a town going to have a raffle. <laughs> <laughs> Lottery? No. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's all going to be about culture. You know, just like it took a while, you know, depending on where we go, I'm not assuming that we're going to be consolidated, but I can see some of the writing on the wall. We. Is, is how that culture develops and how do we do how do we do budgeting together right how yeah. do we don't feel like we're yeah. giving to Paul to Peter you know like we yeah. and and it's sort of how we rationalize that we're all interconnected 
whether we want it or not. <laughs> um, part of me thinks that Bill had mentioned in the towards the end that he's going to be asking us for an audit of, uh, of how our time is spent and what our schedules look like. Um, you know, and I think one of the goals of Act 46 is to for equal opportunities for students, right? So, you know, I think that audit, similar to the how much each building is worth and how what are our assets and our um, our debts, it will just give us more information of where we're all starting. Yeah. I don't know what, what others. I know yes, there are other schools that have eco. I don't know who they are or what, you know what. To what extent? Because we've just never done that kind of an audit as an SU that I'm thinking is all coming. Yeah. And there, there were a couple of superintendents presenting at the VSBA meeting, and one of them that from the Maple Run, I forget his name right now, and he said that there's through the process, his schools haven't changed that much. That there's a school that offers PE, I forget what it is said. It was like two days that yeah. we, and he said that, that that character, that flavor is not something that he has like tried to dis destroy or, or change, you know, uh -huh. like the flavor of different schools is still. That's what I see. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's still, it's still there. Yeah. So it's, so it's depending what culture we create and what, you know, leadership mm -hmm. we have for that. So I think hopeful. It doesn't necessarily mean that we are all going to be cookie cutter schools, right? Mm -hmm. That not every school, it, it, there's so many. Yeah, I, I, I get it. I get it, Ellen, but just, <laughs> I, get it. I get it. <laughs> That's not what we're striving for. <laughs> I think that's fair to say. And I, I don't think that's what any school in the district wants. No. So, I, you know, I think, uh, I don't think any community wants it. And so I, I again, I remain optimistic. But if that's what it comes to, that will be. I don't think that was the of Act 46. Okay. Good on Act 46? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, reports to the board administration. You've already heard that as well. <laughs> Fiscal report. I don't so, know if you have any questions. It was in the full board yeah, yeah. packet. Anybody have any questions on the fiscal report? Nope. Alrighty. Action agenda rescind East Montpelier policy C1 board meeting agenda preparation meetings and distribution. C2 regular board meetings, C3 public participation at board meetings, D1 personnel recruitment, selection, appointment, and background check, D10 public complaints about personnel. I assume these, I assume these are all out of date policies that are just on the books. These, you would know. These right are out. the ones from the policy committee, and that's what when we went through, we found things like the. Um, the background check, all of that has changed since right. these were the written yeah. still and they've out. been updated with the VSBA ones that we've been passing. So they needed to just be taken off of the books. That makes sense. So I, would, I was going to take a motion. Your recommendation. I recommend that we resend these. Does that sound like a motion? Just I'm summer what they did. I'll second to motion. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they went through the books and as we did the recommended and required through the SBA, there were other ones in our books that Neither they are, the we don't do them. They been. don't do them that way. Right. Right. Yeah. And there's only one thing I need to hear. This is that you recommend I recommend it. it you're the only one here. I'm really mm -hmm. that okay. knows, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else thoroughly? Wow, you're making me feel powerful. Yeah, no. Okay. no. Any so discussion? No. Nope. Ready for a vote? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Abstain. Nay. Nay. Abstain. Thanks. Um, Five point two. Approve retirement opt out for teachers. This has to be on here, <laughs> and I don't recommend it. You've done it twice in my nine years. Mm -hmm. um, it it's just something we do every year. Mm -hmm. What What are we opting well, out that people can not be in the retirement system? Or, no. no. What does this no. mean? That we allow a certain number of teachers to early retire. Oh, that early retirement sounds different to me than opt out. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Our teachers yeah, it's can different always verbiage opt to than retire. we do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The wording of this made yeah. me think it wasn't early retirement, the buyout kind of thing. Um, I asked Bill because I noticed it tonight, and he said it's just, it needs to be on there. You need to take action on it every year. So, if we're, so, can so you explain we if we're voting for voting this? I'm recommending that you do not. Because? 
do we just take no action or do we have to actively decline? There are no decline. teachers have come forward and I think that you would, the language is a little It's weird, this. that's um, what I'm asking. Yeah, you can go. So that is the typical language. And then if we were going to recommend something, there would be we will allow X number of staff, we three staff right. members staff. that can exercise that option. To get paid to retire, basically. So what this is saying is that we're not extending any extra benefits to retire early. You can retire, but right. You but you're not retire. getting any salary Correct. for a few years. Yes. Okay. So if we're voting <laughs> we're voting to <laughs> approve this. That's my understanding of So that. we're voting, voting against this. Not, we're, we're voting to not uh, what so is it? If we we're approve this so we're saying then we are say saying we are voting to approve the opt out retirement for zero teachers. I mean, I don't. I make a motion to approve the opt out of. Well, no, 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 I no think Yeah, we don't know if you're. We don't want to allow it. Right. So we say nay. Oh, there you okay. go. So we're going to vote nay. Okay. okay. So we're voting. That's what I was yes. asking. We're yes. voting to approve no retirement opt out for teachers. Yes. Oh, see, I was going to. Or we're making a motion to, to approve, approve retirement opt out, and then we're going to vote it down. I, I think it's better to okay. vote it in the. To word it differently to than approve it. To approve that there will be no op, no retirement opt out for teachers. So that so, by voting affirmative, so make you're saying, I'll make the motion that we. Um, how can I phrase that? That we do not, the motion is we do not offer a retirement opt out for teachers. Mm -hmm. And I probably for should say whatever, whatever the school year is. 2018 yeah. 19. Yeah. Yes. I'll second it. Oh, no, actually, it's not. Oh, yeah, yes, 2019 Yes, yeah, no, it's, no, it's right. Yeah, yeah, because I was. Okay, 18 19. It's not mm -hmm. the next. No, it's 19 20. Yeah. That's what, yeah, that's what I was. Yeah, oh, it's right the next year. Yeah. So Next the motion is not to offer retirement option 19. out for teachers in 2019-2020. There is one. Got that? Yeah. We have to fix it next month. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I second it. Any discussion? I think we beat that one. All those in favor of approving, of, of not offering, of, yes, what Steve said. Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Thank you. I was always um, approve the board order. I make, a motion. I make a motion to approve the board orders in the amount of uh, $33,248.01. Second. Discussion, can I just ask what the Heinemann stuff was? The 600 and something dollars yes. each? We, um, a couple of things, we're doing the new phonics mm -hmm. program mm -hmm. in K through two, which has been awesome. And we are piloting um, FMP version three. We are using version one still, and mm -hmm. we're looking as an SU to go to version three. Okay. That was totally for my benefit. Yeah. Yeah. professionally. Uh, a motion and a second. <laughs> Is there any discussion? All so those cool. in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Good Future agenda good. items? Yes. Um, I had talked to Bill about this and yeah. wanted to bring it up to the board about our use of the rec board for our athletics versus an athletic director like all the other elementary schools in the district. Years ago, we went, everything changed. We used to have the AD when Steve was there. And then we went to the rec board to do this, and I think we need to discuss this as a board. Um, but, uh, listen, However, done it's, a, it's just a future agenda yeah. item. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. It's just an agenda item. Great. Okay. So that it can be discussed. Okay. I would like a little more time for BSBA the next time, if possible. Okay. Uh, board communications. 
And I believe that brings us to adjournment.